All right, everybody, what's up? Welcome to KBN Live on our second week in a row on our new night, Monday night. No Monday night football probably coming up, so we'll keep it we'll keep it on Monday nights for a while anyway. Uh, thanks for jumping on here. I'm Jeff Malott, uh, my other host. I'll never call him a co-host again. Ryan Lambert up above me there. <laughs> uh, Come on. Yeah, we're proud to welcome in again Jay Wallen. Jay, thanks for coming in on the show again. I know you were on early on in the in the year in the uh, development of KB. What was it? KBN After Hours back then, Ryan? Is that what we used to call it? Yeah, yeah, man. Had the smooth yeah. jazz and the bad internet connection. It was awesome. Yes. Yeah. Late night internet. Did we, still, did we still have Shane on here when we were doing that? When you were on here? Unfortunately. Yeah. Shane was still. Uh, <laughs> we're going we're gonna bring him back. Bring him back along sometime. Maybe for the the fiftieth and fiftieth episode or something. Have him on, have him back. Well, on. Oh my. Or reunion tour. Yeah, reunion tour. Maybe the hundredth. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, if you're just jumping on here, help us out. Give us a little share to your local group so they can get in on the questions. We're gonna have some some good conversation tonight. Uh, it's a good night to go live. Had a few things pop off on the group just a little bit ago that we can talk about. That'd be fun. Uh, but before we do any of that, let's talk about the weekend. I mean, Ryan, you just had you a, a little uh, a little weekend, cast you a little a little check this weekend, didn't you? Yeah, man. We uh, we had some new neighbors move in. So uh, our, our local club, TVKA, we were having a uh, Chickamauga Lakewide tournament, and Christine and AJ, are uh, they're working on – uh planting some roots there in dayton so we got them to come out and fish with us and if you remember the kbf on chick last year christine what'd she have jay like 101 or 102 <laughs> it's just it was over 100 i so, know it was something pretty pretty wild so i think yeah. uh all, all the pressure was on kind of beating her like uh, that's 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 what i was worried about everybody else was already at check-in except christine and aj and i was like oh man like i know she's gonna come in here with like 64 65 inches on three but it didn't didn't uh didn't play out there we had a 500 boat uh big bass splash event on the lake so it was uh pretty much a disaster all the way through i saw your uh instagram post it was pretty funny reading some of the stuff like you didn't bring the right gear you had to dig out some hook that didn't oh, meet what you were man. trying to do and made it happen anyway I, I, I'm an idiot. I took, so I, number one, I was sober Sally on Friday night, took all my stuff in, re-rigged everything, re-spooled my rod, went to bed early. I mean, just completely as far away from, from myself as I could get. So I got up that morning, got my pants out of the dryer. My rod was behind the dryer door. So I left without my spinning rod and my whole game plan was just going to be skipping Cinco's under docks. Uh, I got out there, didn't have that. So I was like, man, I'll fish this, this grass out here and, and try to get something. Well, I'm bouncing my Texas rig up. A big fish comes up at the front of the boat and grabs it. And it startled me, but I just, you know, laid into it, uh, broke off my only wide gap worm hook, apparently that I had in my boat. Uh, so I didn't have didn't have a hook to fish with, and I got to I around. One and I, hook to the tournament, <laughs> dude. That's all I needed. I thought. So I'm digging around, and I find uh, some like rusty straight shank hooks and an old bait caster that I keep in the bottom of my tackle bag. And I rigged it up on like the lightest action rod I had, and I went to went to Cinco and with that bait caster in the wind all day. It was uh, it was a good time. Is that going to be your go-to setup from now on for skipping Senkos? I don't think it will ever, <laughs> ever. I'm going to put seven spinning rods in my truck just in case. I only need one, but I'm going to bring extra from now on. That's awesome, man. Uh, and, mm -hmm. Jay, you fished this weekend cash a little check too, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, a little bit, a, a little bit yeah. Uh, our little local club here in Kentucky uh, had a little tournament out at Rough River Lake, which is a very, very famous big bass factory. And uh, oh, that's a joke. It's not. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I got lucky. I actually went Friday, and I had probably the best pre-fishing I've ever had. I shook off a ton of fish. I saw a bunch of big ones on the bed. Uh, I went and I did all right in that tournament. I got fourth place, cashed a little check, uh, lost a couple fish. Uh, the bite was not near as good on Saturday. It was pretty nuts out there. I think this is going to be the worst year for boat traffic, uh, maybe ever. Yeah. Uh, I think I'll agree as, with that. As things open up, uh, you know, Memorial Day, 4th of July, all that stuff, this summer is going to be nuts everywhere, absolutely everywhere. 
cheap gas, people are going to be out running wild. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I don't know if you guys are aware, but I won my first round matchup in this back at bra- bass bracket, bracket bass. Whoa. And I am hey. Ryan, Ryan Lambert's favorite online anglers, according to a post that I screenshotted that he made on my. my you account. are. Yeah. You are. I mean, competition's really stiff, but yes. I consider myself the, in the elite now, so. Thank you all you for should. your support. Hey, listen, if you if you if you win this, Jeff, your name will be cemented in history. I know. I'm making memes for, no for next weekend. Don't worry, guys. I'm, I'm kind of hot <laughs> with the memes. Who's your character going to be? I don't know. I, I fully expect to lose next weekend though, because I'm. I look like Mad Max, like from from those movies. Yeah. That that kind of fits. Yeah. Juggernaut Jeff. Juggernaut Ooh. Jeff. Nah. I think we'll just roll with uh, <laughs> what I'm doing, which is nothing. I'll just go fishing and see what happens. So, yeah, that was, that, that was fun. But, uh, so, yeah, Jay, you know, here we are in this quarantine. It seems like some states are coming out of it. You know, what have you been doing to to kill the time during this? I know there's well, not many live I've tournaments been, or anything. I've been fortunate that, uh, you know, I've not, not missed a day of work, um, been able to work from home. I know a lot of people don't have that luxury, but I, I've been uh, been fortunate in that. Um, but, you know, I, only, I still only work four days a week, which is great. Uh, I've been fishing every opportunity I get. I've been going to Lake Cumberland and Dale Hollow and Chickamauga and fishing little local clubs as, as uh, their events pop up. Uh, really just been sticking close to home, you know, not uh, not going too far. I've dipped down into Tennessee a time or two, but uh, that's about it. So, But staying on the water, man, that's, uh, you know, you got to keep your tools sharp. You got to stay out there. Whoa. And- hey. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, man. And like you said, the boat traffic's crazy. I've I've heard a lot of different uh, podcasts and reports from from people saying that they've never seen more people at their local body of water ever. All and, you know, there's times where I'll take off like a you know a, a Wednesday afternoon or you know something in the middle of the week and go fish somewhere around here, and it's crazy. I mean, it's just not what you would normally expect. It's there's a lot of people getting out. Even during the week. Uh, Mark Jungdahl said he really enjoyed your last video on Chickamauga, Jay. Well, I appreciate that. I've been trying to do a little bit more uh, in that regard. And, uh, you know, I, I had – it's hard to put out good content when you don't have a good fishing trip. So, a good fishing trip, putting some fish in the boat always helps. So, oh, uh, yeah. I appreciate that. A confidence booster there. Yeah, that was that was my next thing, man. It seemed like yourself and other people are using this time to kind of ramp back up their YouTube stuff and, and put out more content. Has that been on purpose? Absolutely. Um, you know, I had a really busy year last year. I got married. I bought a house. Bought a dog. Did a lot of a lot of grown up stuff, and uh, I didn't really concentrate too much on fishing. And uh, that's changing now. So now things have calmed down. And it's uh, it's time to kick it all back into gear, and this has been a really good opportunity. I mean, I have a lot of a lot of time at the house to think about what I want to do, and you know, go out and try try and shoot some new content on the uh, weekends. But I mean, what else are you going to do? You know, I have a lot of tournaments to fish. A lot of the pros are doing the same thing. I mean, you just do what you can. Breaking news: Katie Backa shared your YouTube channel in the comments. <laughs> the link. <laughs> All in queue. Hey, I appreciate. We that. need to get her on the payroll, I Jeff. Swear. Like she needs some sort of like official <laughs> title here or something. All I can pay you. Uh, is Clifton is Allen stickers. said hello, gentlemen, and and later Clifton Allen also said hello, ladies. Uh, thank huh? you, Clifton, for being a fair and balanced young man. I like that. See, Clifton's grown. Well, like, He's grown. I like. I like Clifton. He is. I do. Hey, Dylan, giving me a shout and out with, on I mean, YouTube. I appreciate you, Dylan. Thank you. I'm gonna have to look yours up on YouTube, Jeff. I I have not seen that dump and run link. So I've never ever <laughs> shared it on our own group. Can you believe that? Man, it it takes it takes uh, it takes some brass ones to put something out there on that group. You know. It's, yeah. Uh, well, you know. It's it's a roll of the dice. You know. Well, you know, it's it's, it's well uh, received or not. We set we set the rules for the group, which is no spam like that. So we don't do it ourselves either. <laughs> okay. I got it. Uh, no. I don't know. I don't know about the rules for the group. Uh, Jason De- Della Deli Deli Frassi 
wants to know why Texas is so much better than the rest of the country. Jason, I don't know. I've been trying to figure it out. I've been on Google. I, I don't know, man. Beers are colder in Texas, you know. Beers are colder. Yeah. Things are bigger. Something's bigger. What is it? Something like that. Something's bigger in Texas. Things are bigger down there. I don't know. Texas, Texas is all right. So you're coming down to fish with us this weekend, right, Jay? You're coming down I'll, for the BASS I'll, Nation on Chick. I will 100% be there. Got the Airbnb booked. The wife's coming. Uh, loading up some kayaks. Going to grill some steaks. Drink some beer. Play some cornhole. Do some fishing. I mean, salute the flag. It's Memorial Day weekend, right? I like it. I That's freaking like it. That's what we're going to do. Maybe even eat out at a restaurant. <laughs> Uh, Gene Bohannon is in the comments. He has so far accused me of drinking Maalox, and <laughs> he said Texas is better because they'll put you in the box, which is apparently something that we're going to have to adopt here on KBN. So Texas, in some of their forums, they have like a like a timeout, like a box of shame. Oh. Like you you make a jacked up pay, post, you go sit there for seven days, fourteen days, thirty days. I think I made it in in the Texas group for like. I don't know, two days before I got sent to the box. It was pretty you know, I, pretty I stopped crazy. getting put that put in time out when I was about nine years old. So I you know <laughs> I don't know what that's been time on your best out. behavior ever since. <laughs> that's it, man. You tell me Mrs. Mrs. Wallen doesn't put you in time out, man? I didn't say that. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. Say it say it out loud one more time. <laughs> wow. So, uh, did you guys see the news today from Hobie that uh, they're trying to put the BOS back back on the rails? Uh, there was no official announcement about Kentucky Lake, other than things are kind of fifty fifty and looking good, and they've kind of got a plan for for reintroducing the the tournament circuit. What do y'all think about what they put out there today? I mean, I, I'll just tell you, I th from what I understand, the way I interpret it, Hobie is a go. You know, as an organization, they are are proceeding like it's going to happen unless they're told otherwise by the state. Um, I know the, the state parks, campgrounds, the cottages, the lodges, uh, my understanding is that stuff is all scheduled to open on June 1st, so that's a really good sign. You know, if they're going to open the state parks, which um, this tournament host location is technically a state park, so that's a good sign. Uh, I have a good feeling that it's going to happen. I mean, I think there's probably, if I had to put a number on it, I'd say there's a 75% chance it happens. Okay, well, that's good. Uh, and I'm, well, I, I'm being optimistic, yeah. and I don't know one way or the other. You know? I've, I've got the rules. Well, I mean, it's mostly, it's it's all virtual, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that, isn't that yeah. kind of what they were saying? Like, there's going to be yeah. no meetings whatsoever. So I think right. chances of that popping off are, are pretty good. Yeah. I, don't, I don't really see any I reason so. not to have it. Yeah, I've that's got, the way we've been conducting all of our local clubs too. Is contactless, you know, that kind of stuff. So yeah, and I've got the little the announcement pulled up right here. It says captains' meetings, fish and missions, everything will be hosted digital. No gatherings or captains' meeting, which I understand why they're doing that. That's kind of a bummer. That's one of my favorite parts of yeah. these big events. Um, yeah. After hours gatherings are discouraged and must adhere to state laws. Wink, wink, Mister Lambert. Hey, all right. Hey Hey See you nah, at the sliding it, ride. I'll just be glad for him to, uh, you know, all the live tournaments to get back on track and, and start happening again and slowly get back to the way we were doing it. Just got, It seems like six months ago, doesn't it? Or a year ago, but it was just it's like two months ago we had Logan Martin. Yeah. I mean, it seems like it's been forever. Yeah. Well, Hobie had uh, Norman in March, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. that long ago. Yeah, it just seems like it's been, I don't know, like I said, six months. Yeah, it's it's felt really long. <laughs> Tom Christine Jacob. said, "What are the chances of Corey showing up to the to the Hobie Open on Kentucky?" Corey Dreyer, yes, zero percent chance of him showing up. So I'll say this: we would never know. He could just pay his entry and never show up because there's no meetup. This is perfect. Yeah, get that one under his belt. Yeah, that's it. That is John. <laughs> John Allen, only contact we have is at the ramp passing a whiskey and joint afterwards. If there are Ooh. any Texas law enforcement on here, you may want to look at John. I don't see how you can pass. I guess they're just blowing the smoke into each other's mouth down there in Texas because you're not allowed to touch the same stuff. I don't know how that works. Either way, it's bad news. Hmm. You hear that, John? Don't be touching the same stuff as your friends. <laughs> 
You're getting some fishing questions, Jay. Razor Shad or Zacco? For your Zaco? chatter baits. Zaco, sorry. Uh, are you ready for my answer on that? Yeah, yeah. Neither. Neither. Oh. 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 What are you throwing? Ned Rig? Jay's throwing the Lake Fork Magic Shad. TRD? Wink if I'm right, Jay. Lake Fork Magic Shad. Uh, you know what? I'll, I'll tell you what I put on the back of my jackhammers. I'll just tell you right now. All right. The Rhythm Wave by Jackal. Ah. It is a fine swim bait. Holds up good? It's uh, It holds up really good, um, but something about the way it's made, it's got a flat top with a, I, I don't know, you just have to go look at the swim bait, but it ro it rocks. That's why they call it a rhythm wave. It, it okay. has a rocking action. And, you know, that jackhammer's got a searching action anyway. And you couple that with that... Uh, you basically get a lot of roll out of it. It it, it rolls really far on its side. Um, but All the right. rhythm wave from Jackal, that's my go-to. Rhythm go -to. wave. You should, yeah, I like the name, too. You Dude, I, I know, man. That sounds like an after-hours exercise deal that yeah. housewives I mean, would order. You're standing up to your Katie, name, Jay. Katie done, so <laughs> Katie done sold them out right here. Good Lord, she, she put them on the tag order. Hey. Son. You know, telling you, it's a fine swim bait. Before you came on here, Kurt Smith had shared the post and said, Jay, the juice wa Wallen was going to come on, and, and, and here you go, dropping, uh, dropping the juice for everybody. It is. Yep. That's what we got him here for. Dang. If you were looking at Chickamauga on the map, map study right now, where would you fish Saturday, Jay? <laughs> <laughs> Chester Frost. Are there any ledges or community <laughs> holes that you would like to point out? Chester for all, the whole lake's a community ah, house. Shut up, get out of here, get out of here. Dude, do you know that they pulled, in the Big Bass Splash, they pulled a 10-4 out of Chester Frost at the way station, like right by the ramp? Of course yeah. they did. Yes, yeah. they did. All right. I mean, you can go out and sit in front of the power plants and fish that ledge, I mean. <laughs> With everybody else. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. I like no, it. That, like that's it. the thing, Chickamauga out of, because uh, to me, like Chickamauga, I don't really think I think Chickamauga fish is really small. It's one of the smallest fishing lakes out of the Tennessee River chain. There's just ever there's no secrets. It's such a narrow river. Uh, it's just I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but I, that's my feeling on it. So, I mean, like fishing a bass boat tournament. If you stay on the south end of the lake, you got about eight good spots you can go run to like i mean right. you can cover it all you know pretty easily and not not miss anything now if you want to run if you're like all right south end's dead and make a run up north that's that's what'll what'll yeah. put some heat on you there's uh, to me i think there's a lot more little stuff that you can you can kind of pick apart on the north end the south end's pretty i mean there's a few good flats there's a few good stretches of docks but uh that's that's part of it you got to figure out what's worth it it all gets beat to death. I know that. North, south, whatever. It gets beat. I was on the south end Saturday. I will say that. And I was yeah. way too close to the main channel. I mean, I had jet skis and yachts, like, all over me all day. That's the uh, thing. I think this, this weekend is going to be pretty busy. I mean, it's Memorial Day weekend. You got Chattanooga, Knoxville. How far is Atlanta from Chickamauga? What, three hours, maybe? I don't know. Yeah. Two, three, yeah. something like that. They got a lot of pleasure boat lakes down here because they don't have any fish in them, so they'll be all over Lanier and Altoona. Right, right, okay. It'll still be wild out there. It will. And is that just a uh, one day event this weekend, Saturday only? My understanding. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yep. How many? How many are you guys expecting, Ryan? I mean, to be honest with you, I don't know, Jeff. We had uh, we had thirty in the in our local club tournament Saturday. And a lot of people were pretty frustrated with the boat traffic. I mean, there's nothing you can do about that from from our perspective. I mean, in hindsight, we probably should have uh, taken into account the Big Bass Splash. But when we made our schedule, the Big Bass Splash wasn't on that weekend. They moved it because of the COVID stuff. So, you know, then what do you do? Change your own local schedule because of that? Uh, I mean, it, it does, it does kind of suck out there. I still think we'll probably hit... I don't know, I'd say 80 to 100, I would think. I don't think that's out of the realm of possibilities. Yeah, it would be nice. Nice payday for somebody. Definitely. Yeah. James Strawbridge, he asked if uh, 
I, I guess I'd say the odds of that guy showing up to a tournament would be about the same as Corey <laughs> to that tournament. He's out in Colorado, right? James. Is that right? Yeah, he's, uh, he's out. I think it's Colorado. James, where are you from, bud? It's Colorado or Utah. I can't remember. It's one of those two, though. He's out, out west. He's out west. Uh, yeah. That's a long haul. What was his question? He asked the question? He asked if Minetti would show up to uh, Chickamauga. Uh, I'd say his chances uh, are zero. I'd say, yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> bless, bless it. So, you know, we were just talking about y'all's tournament that's going to go down and the Hobie maybe, you know, firing back up at Kentucky Lake. How long do you think that that's, these modifications are going to be in effect? The rest of 2020, any part of 2021? What do you think, you know, the change is going to be? Anything permanent? It's hard to say. Um, you know, I know a lot of these big entities, they're looking at this stuff from a liability standpoint. So if they think that there's a chance that they could get sued from someone getting sick or something and being able to attribute it to contact they had at one of their events, if they think that that's a, a possibility, then I would say you're going to stick around until that's no longer a possibility. I got you. Um, it's hard. To, I, in my opinion, it's hard to sue somebody for something like that, but people sue anybody for anything. So I think as long that as would that would be something really hard like, to prove. For sure. For sure. Well, like, it'd be I, really hard to nail down, like, hey, you got this at this tournament, not right. at a gas station, not, you know, not at some fast yeah. food restaurant, but, you know, right. that'd be tough. But I think, you know, a lot of them are, are trying to, you know, co cover their back end, and you can't blame them for that. No, so. No. I, I don't know. I, I think you're, we're probably going to see some precautions and some things probably for the rest of the year. And then I, I'd say a lot of that stuff fades out. We can't, you know, I was telling somebody, this is my opinion, but I was telling somebody this earlier today, you can't sanitize your life. You know, microbes and, and uh, bacteria and, and viruses and pathogens, they've been around for millennia. They're not going anywhere. It's actually not good to, to sanitize yourself from all that stuff, it can really hurt your immune. I'm not a doctor, but you know what I'm saying. We can't live in a sterile environment forever. It's yeah. just not possible. I can't so. imagine seeing Steve or AJ up there with a plexiglass divider in front of them trying to do the captain's <laughs> meeting. I would love I would, to see that, though, at the same time. At, yeah, at least Steve-O, for sure. At least Steve. That's exactly what I was picturing with Steve in, like, a Duncan booth or something <laughs> yeah. like, doing the captain's yeah. meeting. <laughs> Little, little, Popping out of a little hole, little cut out the there, and talk to you like he's a bank teller or something. That'd be all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Mark said, "Make him sign a waiver, fish at your own risk." And I think that is part of the yeah. uh, BOS thing. Is there's going to be a waiver involved? Yeah, uh, yep. Right there at the beginning of that. So, yeah, yep. I'm just curious. I, yeah, I mean, 2021 rolls around, and you know, you got outside of kayak fishing, you got you know Bassmaster Classic and all these huge events that. Normally, I mean, it probably wouldn't have happened if all this would have popped off two weeks sooner than it did. Oh, know? no question. No, I mean, well, Shimano, they none of them came to the Classic this year. They shut it all down, not any of the reps, nothing. I mean, they were not, not present because, I mean, if you remember, that was right when, like, all the stuff started in China even. It wasn't, still wasn't, like, a huge concern out here and then i mean it was just kind of dominoes after that everything started getting serious and i i don't know i don't know how long this is going to go i mean you know they kept saying warm weather is going to slow it down whatever it's just like the flu uh i don't know I, you can't keep the country shut down uh forever i mean you know we gave it a good run but at some point like we will all starve to death if there's nobody out there you know, making food. If these farmers quit farming, then and we're all in yeah. trouble. You can't. And I'm not saying fishing tournaments compare to putting food on the table, but it, you know, it's it is definitely a parallel on you can't stop your yeah. life. The, the fishing yeah. tournaments are good for mental health, for sure. Sometimes, and you know, sometimes. you got to look at it too. I mean, <laughs> we're we're all fishermen and stuff, and we have day jobs. But you know, kayak fishing is an industry. There are people who make a living whether that's selling boats or accessories or products or whatever, there's people that, that you know, they're living it relies on this stuff. And tournament and I mean, fishing is a big part of that. Robert you know, Field said it last night. If, if any of you watched the Act Live, you know, he had tens of thousands of dollars 
of sponsorships that, you know, that he relies on to do what he gets to do every day. I mean, that's the first thing these companies cut. Like oh, their sure. first phone call is their marketing dollars because that's not in a crisis situation. They're trying to let people continue to work and feed their families. Yeah. They're not worried about giving, you know, somebody that's waving their flag 20 grand to be on the internet. That's not a concern. There's hundred percent. Rodney, the guy I was fishing against was Marcus. Rodney said his fish were social distancing. That's why I beat him. <laughs> so, Fair enough. so we're going to go. I mean, Rodney, I, I talked to Rodney last week before, before he and Conrad's big, big matchup. I cannot even put into words how impressed I was with Rodney's story. And I heard it third hand. So I got in touch with Rodney today and, uh, Rodney, Rodney has lung cancer. Okay. He's on oxygen, you know, but he said he's good to fish about three or four hours at a time without getting exhausted. He's good friends with Jamie Broad. He mentioned Jamie's name a couple times and Jamie was actually out fishing with him. Uh, Jamie had to leave the water and Rodney stayed. He's like, I knew for me to be able to beat him, I was going to have to put in a full day of fishing. So he, you know, Overexerted himself, got weak, blacked out. A guy in an airboat found him, took him back to the ramp. They get him in his truck, get the air conditioner on. Like, you know, he starts coming back. They're wanting to call an ambulance. Like, you know, get get some help out here for this guy. <laughs> he, he won't let him do it. <laughs> Gets back home. And, his you know, his wife's obviously a little upset. Tell him how crazy he is. <laughs> like, why are you out doing this stuff? But, I mean, I think that's that's a testament to how – you know, I mean, a lot of us, like, you're crazy about it. You're competitive. Like, you, that's what you want to do. And, I mean, I, to me, that that's awesome. Just, I mean, you know, not that that happened to him in that circumstance, but that he just has, you know, freaking ginormous balls and is like, hey, I'm going to go out in the freaking swamp and, and give it all I got, man. And uh, that's great. So, Something else, I, we fished a Tremont, uh, Tremont Tavern Benefit Tournament for all of the staff at Tremont. We donated all the proceeds to them. So I put up a Yak Addicts prize pack or whatever. Uh, I'm actually sending that to Rodney tomorrow. Uh, I don't need it. So I think I think he's more deserving of that than anybody because that definitely showed uh, <laughs> showed what he's got. Uh, I like it. Good that's, job, Rodney. That's an awesome story, man. And, and shout out to that's Rodney. That's a very we, awesome story. We need to have Rodney on here one night and talk about that, I think. Or just talk I about agree. story. I agree. I agree. No, he's, he's a character, too. He's <laughs> he is definitely worth having on, for sure. And, hey, and shout out to the KBBT guys. I did have fun in the bracket this weekend. It is a cool concept. I know that, you know, a lot of people – enjoyed fishing in it these last few weeks uh but shout out to them for the what they did with their award for the winner that you know naming it the rodney kennan award and and then that was pretty cool and uh recognizing the, his toughness and uh you know giving him that label rodney all, and all. and rodney made, made the joke he said conrad might have beat me but now he's got to look at my name on that trophy <laughs> dang right <laughs> dang right oh it's awesome straight up i like that yeah that's Mr. a legit story right there Mm-hmm. Yeah, Mr. Bohannon said prayers for Mr. Kennan. I think we can all get behind that. So if you're the praying type, say a prayer for Mr. Kennan to get over his uh, fight through this sickness, uh, you know, that a lot of people face and, and, you know, get back to fishing. If anybody has more questions, throw them in there. We're going to get into some more stuff. I mean, to pivot off of that with the KBBT uh, and, of course, uh, like I said, his opponent, Mr. Benetti, uh, things got a little sideways with him on the on – the, uh, page this week <laughs> i thought it was a joke man like yeah. i was like while all this is happening i can i mean honestly how many posts would you say that didn't get posted to the page i would say between 20? the moderators at least 20 never made it to light i mean that's like and we try to be super super lax i don't think you can argue that there's a more <laughs> relaxed page <laughs> On yeah. the internet, I mean, now I know some of the Texas guys will argue that they got a couple of rowdy little pages, uh, but I mean, for the most part, like we we try to keep some sort of direction on ten thousand members here, and we don't really say much. But man, like you you know you gonna burn the page down. Clifton and John Allen know for a fact, like they were <laughs> two of the first ones that uh, that managed to find the limit. I mean, 
if you just keep posting the same things over and over and over again, like, you know, you, you gotta have some kind of guidance for that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, we all had a good laugh for a minute. And like you said, Ryan, I thought it was a joke, but, uh, I don't know. I don't I know that it was. I kind of watched the uh, live stream last night from the KBBT, and it seemed to be kind of both sides being sort of contrite and, and a good sport, but then comes back with the same nonsense. And, and you know, it's a free country. Do whatever you want. But we, we're our page, we don't – as much nonsense and silliness that we do have on there and laugh and try to cut up and all that kind of stuff. But we don't – we're not down with just a pure spam over and over just to be doing it. Right, if that makes sense. Right, just post. Like you could be proud of your it. accomplishments. I mean, post attorney recap, whatever. That's great, man. But like, if you're just continually like ribbing just to you know just to try to stir stir stuff up, like we we can chill out with that a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I, I think you know overall, I don't want there to be the connotation that I am against KBBT or anything. I'm not, Jeff. You know, great job. Good. You know, keep doing it. It's not necessarily my flavor, but that's okay. I mean, I, I, if I fish an online event, it's usually a charity event. Uh, that's pretty much it. That's that's not my thing. But I think it's a great platform. Obviously, you know, it got a lot of participation. And, I, I mean, I, overall, I think it's good for the sport. Uh, I think success-wise, they're probably going to have to have to separate out maybe – Florida and Texas, as you saw, who made it to the championship round, I think you'll see that a lot because we've all seen how the online tournaments go. Jay, you know as well as anybody, I mean, you're not going to go out on Kentucky Lake and hang up 116 inches, you know, <laughs> multiple <laughs> times. Like, that's, Ever. I mean, that's just, that's <laughs> tough. Yeah. Uh, but I, I mean, I, oh, I think, I think it was good. I think it definitely obviously got a lot of eyes on on everything uh but you know a lot of people congratulate him i congratulate him i still congratulate him jeff if you recall last night when they announced that he won i texted you and said hey we need to get this guy on the show that was the plan literally it wasn't 30 minutes later the dude's got me eating my words i was like never mind dude like i <laughs> I, I thought it was hype it's not it's not hype like he's he's not gonna quit with this stuff no no I, and, and that's that's the truth we literally text each other and we're like hey you know let's bring this fellow on here and, and we'll cut up a little bit and get to the bottom of what who this guy is but then it just kept on with the with the nonsense and, and frankly i mean the guy caught him you got to catch him he did catch him whether wherever you live yeah. you still got to oh, yeah. catch him and he did that but yep but uh yeah, I mean, I, enough was enough, and, and you know he's on a little bit of a break right now. So, and 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 fr frankly, he got a little sideways with a couple of uh, our KBN members that are that are uh, they can keep take up for themselves. But there's a certain place you draw the line, and you don't you don't come after lady anglers in our group. You just don't do it. So, you know, making sexist remarks and stuff like that. So, I don't know. Call us old fashioned, huh, Ryan? I mean, I you can call me whatever you want to. I don't yeah. really care either way. Yeah. Like you know. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, but, Whatever, but anyway, it'll be all right. We digress. No, no, no hate. <laughs> Rodney, Rodney said Florida, Texas, Rodney, one region. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, uh, we, we've kind of get. Brad, go ahead. I was going to say with the KBN has kind of been a good platform to create characters in kayak fishing. Uh, you know, we've got some dandies out of out of the group. It has. And, and Conrad was another one and is another one. And who knows? He may come back yeah. around someday. But, uh, you know, Jim, Clifton, I, I can just rattle off a few. Uh, Donnie Bennett here and there. Donnie gets on a tear. <laughs> there, there's, some, there's some awesome, uh, you know, characters out there that have, have got that platform in the, in the group. And, uh, you know, so we want to keep that it's going. Like but, WWE meets NASCAR. Yeah, yeah. Oh, please, he defended himself. Uh, that's cool. God, but, and I love that. Yeah, yeah. He defended but, but himself anyway. on what? The guy made 30 spam-ass posts, man. That ain't defending yourself. Yeah. That's you crying for attention. That's not a defense. I'm sorry, Jason. I apologize for that. Uh, so, Brad Oswalt asked a question for you, Jay. Uh, have you been in a slump fishing tournament-wise, number one? Number two, what do you do? What do you do to get out of it and get back on the horse? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I would consider basically most of last season a slump for me. I mean, I you know, I <laughs> I did okay. You know, I, I I cashed a little bit of money last year, but not not what I'm used to. But man, you can't. All these tournaments stand on their own. You can't take. There is such a thing as momentum, 
and slumps. It goes both ways. But you have to forget about the last tournament. Whether you won or got dead last, you have to forget about it because it doesn't matter anymore. It's over. Uh, you know, I've got a little honey hole in my backyard. If, if I feel like I just uh, I need to, to reset, I go out there and jack some jaws and feel a little bit better about myself and look forward for the next tournament and start, you know, my process doesn't change. You know, my, my pre-fishing, my homework, my execution, all that stuff, everything that I do doesn't change. And I know that it's successful whether I do well in a tournament or not. So I'm not going to change my, my methodology to what I do. Uh, it's just kind of reset and start over, win or lose, either way. So what's your what's your favorite lake to fish, Jay? Out, out of everything in the country, what's your favorite? If you had to pick one. St. Clair. That's For pretty obvious off. reasons. <laughs> I've been going up I've been going up to St. Clair since two thousand and six. And man, it's awesome. Like I've had hundred fish days. I've caught five pound largemouth up there, which is crazy. Um, you know, my, my PB smallmouth was seven pounds, four ounces that came from there. I've caught big musky walleye perch. I mean, that lake is fantastic. You can do pretty much whatever you want to do up there. It's awesome. That's probably my favorite. AJ said your honey hole is Beaver Lake. <laughs> He's wrong. Is there a Beaver Lake? Is there a Beaver Lake in Kentucky? Or is he talking about my, yeah. beaver? is he talking about my Beaver Lake over here in Arkansas? No, no, I, I've got some beaver in the backyard, actually. You go, you boys just arguing over beavers out here. I don't understand oh, what's well, going on. Oh, God. Beaver, okay, I'll tell you real quick about Beaver Lake. I can be there in about 10 minutes from my driveway. And it's, uh, I'm trying to think how many acres that lake is. Maybe 300, something like that. Okay. okay. The Department of Fish and Wildlife manages it for panfish. Hell, yeah. It, it's right. a trophy bluegill lake. Okay. Uh, it's got some big bass in it, uh, but it's the kind of place I could go over there and if I spent all day with with bags and bags of Cinco's, I could go over there and catch like 80 bass, and most of them are going to be under 14 inches. Like it, it's that. So kind it's of like Nick. It's like Nickajack. Yeah, but with smaller fish. <laughs> yeah. oh, okay. All right. Yeah. I got you. I got you. It's got some good ones in it, but they're few and far between. It's a bluegill lake. What's your favorite presentation to fish? Uh, a jig. A That's jig my bar. deal. Football. Yeah. No, you know, actually, I like uh, BC Lures, little little lure plug. They make a. It's called a Phantom Head, and I guess you. It's not really a flipping jig. It, it's not really a casting jig. It's just kind of an all-purpose jig, but it's a Phantom Head. Um, I use it, I can fish that thing in two foot of water, or I mean, it's good for structure fishing. You know, out deep on ledges too. I use it for everything, just different weights, you know, different sizes. But that particular phantom head, that's my jam. 158 acres, Adam Shepard says. Ah, okay, yeah, so, yeah. Pow, got it. it I actually saw Adam. I went out there about three weeks ago, something like that, on a Wednesday afternoon, and. Ran into Adam at the parking lot. He was just out uh, there. Did he have a stringer of bluegill in his pocket? No, he was out there bass fishing with me. We were just trying to get out of the house and happened to run into each other out there. I got you. All right. Ryan, let me respond to this Adam, Jason guy real quick Adam in the comments. Thick, by the way. Okay, go ahead, man. Yeah, so this Jason guy said uh, he's, he went back on the Benetti thing, and then we're going to put it to bed. But he said that guy never attacked anyone. He just bragged a lot. Never attacked him. He said he bragged a lot but backed it up. They attacked him, and he defended himself. Uh, you know, Mr. Benetti, for whatever you – know, I've never met the guy, never talked to him. He he created his own problem there on purpose uh, with umpteen amount of posts to try to to try to try create this persona of, of some, almost like a wrestling villain. I don't know. He wanted that. We let it go for a while because we thought it was funny. It ceased to be funny, and it turned into basically just like if a company was spamming our page with their advertisements – it was an advertisement for his nonsense. So, you know, we're tired of it and it's gone. It's pretty, it's pretty much it. Agree or disagree? And that's all there is to it. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I completely agree. I yeah, mean, yeah. Yeah. I do, I do give him credit. He never, he never got foul languaged or anything like that. And got a little bit sideways at the end with some of the stuff he, you know, 
I guess I'd call sexist comments, but that even really that wasn't even the breaking point. It was the pure, relentless, nonstop posting. It was a straw that phone. broke the camel's back. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. anyway, that's it. That. I'll, I'll I'll say something to that point real quick. I don't want to jump in there, but uh, you have you have to kind of ask yourself: Would other Facebook pages allow something like that to go on? The majority of them would not. Yeah. Yeah. So we let it right. ride for a while, a lot longer than you know anybody else would, and you know it ceased to be entertaining. So. It ceased to be around, so that's it. Even the cesspool gets full sometimes. Yeah, man. <laughs> Blame is on everyone, but not him. I, I appreciate you, Jason. Thanks for your opinion. But uh, oh, yeah, yeah. You can't Thank create you. your own problem and blame everybody else. That doesn't make any sense to me. What? But but we'll agree to disagree on that. Fishing sucked. It was a nice nice afternoon. Any more questions for Jay or anything fishing related? <laughs> When one person's dominant, it stops being a forum. That's true. Yeah, you're right. Of, and stuff. I mean, and that's that's the thing. Like we got, there's ten thousand members in here, and yeah. and is everybody active on there all the time? No, they're not. But it, you know, we we have to keep it somewhat user friendly, I guess you should say. Like, I mean, we want to keep it fresh. Just like you know, when when the Flexgate thing went down. There were a thousand posts about the same thing. We're like, you can say whatever you want to. Keep it here. Just keep it. Keep it consolidated. Just so it's not just blowing the page up. I mean, it's it's crazy. If, I don't if, know. If, I think if that anybody's was, an old school forum member, did any, you guys probably were on fishing forums at some point. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, I am. The moderators a lot of times have to consolidate still stuff like that into one thread because you'll get fifteen threads about a football player or a new recruit or a fishing thing, whatever it is, whatever kind of form you're on. So that's, that's nothing new to these big forums. So we're just doing what we got to do. Um, Matt Frentrist, Jay asked, what are you, what event are you looking forward to for the remainder of the year that you're going to make? Yeah, this is actually uh, kind of maybe a little surprising for a lot of people, but uh, I'm looking forward to two events equally. Um, the first one is the Hobie event on the Mississippi river in lacrosse and then the second one is the bass event a month later at lacrosse okay i i love that place up there it's like it fishes like florida but just with a little bit smaller bass and it seems like they're easier to catch up there i don't know there's a lot they're not of as fish. finicky as florida bass there's a yeah lot of i've fish never been there. it's unreal man it's i mean you've got current in most places but you can there's still backwater slack areas but man the 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 grass, the emergent vegetation, all of that stuff, it reminds me so much of Florida fishing. And it's just enjoyable up there. It's, the weather's always really comfortable. Never gets really too hot. Uh, but I don't know, man, something about that place. I, I went up there for the first time a few years ago, and I love it up there. I think it's really cool. Yeah. I've been once, and I, I can't wait to go back. Yeah, it, awesome. I'm going to make it this year. I've never been. I'm I'm going this year. I made my mind up. All right. Yeah. Hopefully for both, if I can get in there, I'll be at both of those events for sure. I've already got it penciled in, ready to go. Yeah, man. I like it. That'd be fun. Yeah. It's a, it, and the whole atmosphere up there is it's a different world, man. Those Wisconsin folks, it's it's different. It definitely is. Yep. And, and that spotted cow, man. Spotted cow and cheese curds, baby. That's I'll all you need in Wisconsin. They put yeah. they put the cheese and meat advertisements above the gas prices out there on the gas station signs. It's interesting. Okay. Very interesting. Uh, Jake Harshman wants to know what your favorite jig trailer is, Jay. Ooh. See, I don't have a favorite jig trailer. Um, my jig trailer depends on water temperature. I have different jig trailers for different water temperatures. Um, oh, dang. You're yeah. a scientist. Well, hey, man. you got to pay attention to the deep. You know what I mean? That What's your cold water jig trailer? My cold water? A zoom chunk. I like to slow fall. Uh, anything, the colder the water, obviously, the less action in a trailer I want. I don't want, uh, you know, big paddle tail, um, you know, kind of a trailer or anything in cold water. I like a, just a the zoom chunk, really, is my favorite in cold water. Yeah. It just it falls really slow. I think that's, uh, you know, if you want to throw a jig in cold water, that's what you need. Have you ever tried cra live crawfish? You know what? The only time I've ever live bait fished with crawfish 
was on Lake Erie, and it was a blast. My dad and I, <laughs> there, and uh, we were actually, we were struggling. We were up there fishing the Bass Islands, and we were really struggling. I mean, we were catching like, I mean, we were catching like five, six fish a day, which is terrible. And my dad got kind of pissed off and went to the bait shop, bought like four dozen live crawdads, and we got there and smoked them. It was awesome. I've got a I've got a little smally spot on Gunnersville I like to fish, and yeah. I get out there I I do I get out there one morning before a tournament and there's these two guys sitting in a John boat and they are snatching I mean I'm talking about literally freaking boat flipping five pound smallmouth in the dark and I'm like what's that like I mean I've caught them but I ain't ever caught them like that and I was like what are you like, guys I I've got a tournament starting here in a minute what are y'all doing live crawfish. <laughs> that's exactly what they were doing i was like well, you can't right. you can't replicate it oh that hurt i mean it, it looked like i've seen guys shiner fish in florida and that's exactly yeah. what it reminded me like you know just cane poles just dragging them in it was nasty hey uh talk about your jig trailer somebody asked a little bit ago i think it was mr cannon uh when is your next map breakdown the juice video going to drop on youtube he really likes those i guess oh okay well i mean we can do that uh you know, just ne what's the next tournament? I guess you've got a Chickamauga tournament, right? We'll, we'll, we'll do a little something. We'll, we'll break some stuff down from Chickamauga. How about go. that? Burn maybe if you, maybe we should save that for something. Maybe if we, I don't know, maybe we could put our heads together, maybe come up with something that would stockpile yeah. some stuff, maybe. Stockpile some stuff, yeah. yeah. What do you think, Joe? I, I like that idea. That's cool. Okay, yeah, right. we'll, we'll, we'll write, write that, that down. down. Yeah, write that yeah down. so, you know, maybe, maybe some juice will be coming, but maybe in just a little different format than yeah. what you're using. Ooh. Oh, okay. Yeah, All right. yeah. Switching containers. Wink, wink. Yeah. Okay. I like that. Uh, let's see. Anybody else got any more questions for Mr. Wallen? Uh, Jay brought us – oh, somebody brought up that they were there. Todd Jacobs said they were there at your KBF, <coughs> KBF Open win two years ago on your birthday. Yeah, that's right. It was my birthday. And then Christine yeah. said you bought everybody ice cream with that money. I did. Yeah. We went to an ice cream place called the uh, Hood Scoops. Hood scoops. She hood said that. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Pretty good. Yeah. What? No, okay. it's called hood scoops, and they had like a. It was set up like a 1950s diner, but it was a ice cream spot. Pretty sweet. So it wasn't like hip hop themed. Like no, nah, it wasn't that kind of hood. Okay. It's like playing. Right, that would be that would be even better though. <laughs> that's my bad. <laughs> that's my bad. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, maybe you can yeah. repeat that. I had a summer. thing. I had a thing I was going to say to you, Jay, and I can't remember what it was. Dang. Boy, y'all stole it right out from under me right there. Does it have anything to do with Jim and Lil Boosie? <laughs> <laughs> no, but we can go there. <laughs> you don't want to go there. <laughs> I do. I think I think Jim's a, Jim's a rapper in his I think he is. free time. Uh, are you going to Lake St. Clair? Tim Percy wants to know. The good old boy from north of the border. I might. All right. I assume, is he talking about the June 6th date? Or is he talking about the Border City Classic? I don't know, Tim. What are you talking about? Clarify, Tim. I saw something uh, when AJ made a post about the Kentucky Lake event. A few of the Canada guys were worried about coming down because they weren't sure if they're going to have to be quarantined going back. That's a weird twist, yeah, I think. I, I think they ran into that at the uh, Norman, Norman event. When they got yeah. back, they had to – they had to lock it up, lock it up for fourteen days. That's wild. Yeah, I, I yeah. guess we forget people coming from across the border for these tournaments We're worldwide. I remembered what I was going to say. It was about uh, Todd Jacob. It it was. It took me a month to realize that that was Todd Patrick. <laughs> 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 I, was, <laughs> I kept seeing his like live bids post. I was like, I know, I recognize that dude. And then I was like, Ah, oh, that's Todd. Okay, that's Todd Patrick. <laughs> got me with a name change, Todd. You got me. Hey, and by Tim the way, Tim Percy says any date, he, yeah. any time uh, you want to come up when you come. Uh, up. Well, hey, I I can probably I haven't missed uh, St. Clair any year since 2006. I will be up there at some point. There you go, year. Tim. Yeah, we have a bucket yeah. of crawdads waiting on you up there. Yep. Yeah. I like it. Now, hey, I wanted to shout out to Todd Jacob and those guys at the KBBT. They did it for having limited information on a bunch of guys. They were able to put together a pretty good little broadcast trying to talk about everything that was going on. So good job with that, fellas. I clicked on it a couple times throughout the day. I can't remember if it was Saturday or Sunday. 
I cannot believe that Greg covered that for like seven and a half hours. That's nuts. Yeah. Like, that's crazy. Hats yeah. off to you, man. That's a good run right hey, there. To be able to talk about <laughs> all those people and really probably not have that much information on who they all are was pretty impressive to keep on talking. For seven and a half, seven hours. And a half hours. We can barely keep it on track for one. I know. And he just did it for seven and a half. That's crazy. Yeah. Good job. We're circling the drain right now. We're at 50 minutes. I can't imagine seven, <laughs> seven hours. <laughs> right. Yes. No, it's his passion. Yeah, good job, man. No doubt. What do you see, Jay? Where, where do you see – I mean, COVID, COVID be damned. What do you see happening here? Like, I, you know, you've you've been in this for a while. You fished a little bit of everything. You've been very successful at at a lot of different tournament series. Like, the, I want your state of affairs on what we got now, and then where do you think it, it's heading in the future? Well, you know, obviously we're in a pause. You know, I think this is kind of a everybody had to pump the brakes. Um. I don't know, man. I, I I don't think that the desire for what we do is gone. If anything, it's gotten stronger. Um, I do think there could be um, there could be a hiccup in the marketing money, you know, from a lot of these companies, uh, angler support, trail support. You know, a lot of different things are going to be tougher. I mean, I think that's just something we have to swallow you know is that's just going to be the way it is um i think things are going to be fine though this sport's fine there's too much there's too much love for it and there's too much demand for it for it not to be um you know these tournament trails are going to get back on their feet these events are going to start popping off and i think i think everything's fine man i think everything's going to be all right there could be some separation here and there you know, you got you got three big boys in the arena right now, and you know there's going to be some. Uh, I don't know. We'll see what happens. There's going to be some separation, though, one way or the other. Um, we'll just see how far it goes. But uh, I think I think the state of affairs is okay. You think any big changes to any of the big three? Any major changes? It's hard to say. I don't know. Um, Big changes like what? Like, like uh, you know, like right now the Bass Open Series is on track to keep growing. Uh, I'm sure BASS mm -hmm. is planning on growing, or they were. Uh, yeah. KBF's a monster with all the different things they have going on. So do you think the other two will try to keep growing and maybe KBF pulls back and they all meet in the middle or, or you know, well, from that perspective? I can tell you that I, I guarantee you that all three entities want to keep growing and getting bigger. Um and they're going to all three try to do that. Um, they may, they may feel like there's different ways to do that and different paths to do that. Uh, which one's right, which one's wrong. I don't know. Maybe they're all right and all wrong in different ways, but, uh, I think they're all going to try to continue to grow. Um, I it's, think, it's I think Hobie and Bass have some security in the, in their backing. You know, yeah. obviously Bass is, is huge. I mean, astronomical huge when you look at the numbers on paper you know just with the sponsor dollars they pull hobie is obviously a worldwide you know phenom in the kayak world so you know they they're they're there uh, i think that you know the attendance of these future events obviously online events do a little bit of funding and people we, we people knock that all the time oh they're making so much money off online events there's not really i mean it's not it's not a huge profit now the national championship that is that's an event that carries weight you know profitability wise i think a lot of how things go is going to ride on the attendance of that national championship in a already crowded fall lineup now so yeah the fall is going to be nuts yeah. it's going to be worse than any spring and, we've ever seen for sure yeah, and 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 no nobody can fish at all that's for sure i don't, I don't believe so you know you're going to have people are going to have to make choices. That's all. It's going to come down to, you know, you make what choices in your best interest or what you feel is, you know, going to play to your strengths. But uh, people are going to have to make choices, and you know, probably all of the trails will suffer attendance issues because of that. You know, it kind of hurts them all. Yeah, uh, it does. It does. You know, it's going to be a crowded fall, and there's not much we can really do about it. Just pick and choose your battles. You know. Yeah, it's and you know the, the 
horrible aspect of all this is the the economic impact this whole thing's had on our country. There's people that don't have the income they used to have, so they may not be able to to travel to some of these events. That could affect attendance too. Uh, and then you've got BASS. They're I don't they haven't announced the classic location yet, have they? Or did I miss that? <laughs> Not, so, not I don't think so. so that championship will be rolling right into February, which is only a couple months right. You know, after the, everything wraps up this year. So, mm-hmm. yeah, like I said, choices are going to have to be made. You can't do them all. So Mark Jungdahl, who, if I'm not mistaken, did he not just join KBN a little earlier today, Jeff? Uh, perhaps, yeah. I thought I saw Anyway, he's all over the place tonight, and I like it. Uh, he said these live stream events are the future, and I agree with that. I do, and I'm not talking about from from just an online perspective. I think I think for uh, uh, these events to maintain integrity and kind of an elite status, you have to be on the same water, and you have to be fishing the same circumstances. Like that is part of when when you look at the big money stuff. Like that's the reason you know these guys, these MLF pros. That's the reason Jason Lambert's not on Pickwick. <laughs> fishing online MLS every weekend or, you know, G man's on Gunnersville. Like that's why, like it, I think the live stream part, I think that is definitely going to be a, a big move in the future. And I don't know who's going to do it first. I don't know if it's going to be BASS, if it's going to be Hobie. I think if you have a camera on your boat and a signal booster and it's sending the data, not, not on a cell phone signal, it's sending it back to a truck, a mixing truck you have all the all the data stored, and then they they can mix it. And you can keep up with your favorite angler, you know. And and number two for the judges, they can make sure nothing shady's going on. Like yeah. you see these guys measuring their fish, you see that they're not pulling them off a stringer, you see that they're not using live bait. I mean, I think that takes a lot of the question marks that as kayak fishermen, they're still they still exist. I mean, we see it, mm-hmm. you know, every six months or so, somebody's kind of figured out they got a fish tail in their pocket. Like somebody's got something going all the time. But I think I really do agree with that. I think that is gonna be it may not be in the next two years, but I think when that when a big money sponsor or entity steps up, that's gonna be it. Is you're all that's gonna have a yellow say. tech or something. Yeah, you know, you said you didn't know who would do it first. I know who will do it first. The one with the deepest pockets and the biggest sponsor who's willing to put up the money to make that happen. Yeah, man. That's, uh, that's who's going to do it first. I don't know who, you know, <laughs> but that's the yeah. deal there. I agree. I think, I think that's it. Yeah, the bottom line is... But I think there's a reward there, though. Sorry, Jeff. No, no, no. I was say that, like you were just saying, Jay, the technology's not cheap. I mean, it's expensive oh, to really do yeah. that. Yeah. So, yeah, we so. can all use our GoPros and our cell phones and all that stuff and that's fine but the quality's still not there the the service you know a lot of these lakes is not there it's and and i mean a good example is is the five live stuff that that they've been doing which you know as we said is a great concept it is a great concept and that's a i mean it's a good test run because you see where it needs to improve like nobody I, i love watching fishing but nobody wants to sit there and just watch some choppy in and out footage other than this everybody loves kbn but other choppy in and out footage you know you don't want to sit and watch that for eight hours a day you have to make it a presentable uh finished product but i I think once you do that you can sell sponsors you can sell ad time you can that's that's when you're going to start seeing this kind of come into play and the more personalities there are and the more names that are recognizable in the sport that's what's going to drive that when they realize that there are these people with a following, you know, people are going to tune in just to watch them. That's, that's the, the future of it all. I think. Yeah. And we want to see them fishing. You, you know what I mean? You want to see a, a fishing perspective. Uh, you know, right now we're kind of limited in that too. the point of view, you know, you don't want to just be propped up looking at them or just looking at the back of their head. You want to see them fishing just like you do in, on the, on the, the big boat yeah. side of things. Uh, and if you guys remember when bass bass live started and they started trying to live stream some of their stuff with the elite series, it was bad. I mean, it was choppy and in and out and everything. And, you know, it took money and improving in technology to get there. And, and, you know, we can do it. It's just going to take, like I said, who's going to step to the plate and, and pay the piper to get all that technology and get the camera. And Cody going. Prather, we, we need to bring Cody Prather on one night. Uh, you know, number one, because he's, he's had his hands in a lot of different pots, but he could really give some insight on what it takes to make all that work. Yeah. Uh, yep. and, and Todd Jacob and Jason – Denise, D-Nice, I don't want to say your name wrong, 
they say drones. So apparently they own stock in drone batteries. I don't know if they've ever flown a drone, <laughs> but if you got enough drone batteries to last you an eight-hour tournament, you are yeah. you're a rich man. Right I there. get about 30 minutes out of mine if I'm lucky. Yeah. Yeah, here's 20, the, 20 and mine's in a tree somewhere. You know, here's the deal, guys. <laughs> like, every one of us here probably own high-quality, high-definition equipment to get a fine video capture. That's not the problem. Yep. I mean, you can buy that on the cheap. You can go buy a nice GoPro 8 for 300 bucks and, and, yep. and get a nice picture. But the, the money comes in trying to get that picture to your some guy's phone sitting at work trying to watch it on a Friday afternoon. Yep. That, that That's the yep. that's the the uh where we're getting tripped up right now from a technology perspective but we'll get there and it'll be fun hopefully i'm not like in the nursing home but if i am i'll watch it when that happens <laughs> from there maybe duck it will pony up i don't know yeah, listen if you want to talk about a series with deep pockets <laughs> yeah. that's that's that's, that's cool. definitely the ones with the touch right there I, yeah. uh boyd you know love him or hate him some people don't like his personality but that guy, uh, he knows how to make a dollar. He definitely, definitely knows how to make Duckett a dollar. Duckett buys KBN. Ryan, I don't know if he understands how close to, well, they're never close to buying KBN, but there's been some uh, chatter out there before. <laughs> we can't be bought. We All right, 20 bought. bucks. <laughs> 20 bucks, you can have the whole thing. Yep. That dumpster fire is yours, buddy. Yep. Casey Yingling and 20 bucks, and we're we're out. Oh, all right. Nah, I'm, I'm down. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see it develop. It's kind of cool that you know I've been doing this since 2011. I don't know how long you guys have been messing with the kayak fishing, but it's been it's been wild to see it develop just over that time. I mean, nine years is that very very long of a time. And to, when I started doing it, to say that we'd be talking about live streaming events and there's events paying out twenty, thirty, fifty, seventy five thousand dollars. I mean, I never would have believed you if you told me that in 2011. So who knows what nine years from now is gonna look like? No doubt. Did you ever think you'd be sitting here on a podcast? No, man. I think I had a flip phone then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now this this stuff's fun, and the technology is going to keep getting better. So, Brad Oswalt, need, we need a new series that works like the MLF Cups, not aired until afterwards. Interesting concept. I like that. I agree, and I don't think that would be a bad idea. Live streaming it on an app or something. That's obviously a huge investment. I mean, just to have the technology, you know, with building the app and, and that ability to, to, to carry that much data. But I, I think you'll see what you're talking about, Brad. That's what you'll see first is that you collect the data. And if there's ever a question on, uh, you know, what happened in a tournament or what somebody's doing, then you can go back and review that footage. But also you can edit together a 60-minute you know, well, it wouldn't even be 60 minutes. What is it, like actual 40 minutes of real footage for an hour-long TV mm -hmm. plug? I mean, that's not that's not bad. Well, that was what MLF did, right, when they started. Yeah. That's all it was. Yep, it was. Donnie Bennett, no, I do not need a haircut. I'm in it. I told, I told <laughs> who was that? Brant. I told it to Brant earlier. I will cut my hair when you beat me, Donnie. So, all right. Uh uh keith martin says ryan versus jay in arm wrestling who wins mm. we'll tell you saturday keith oh sorry keith live stream you, i got the i got the be over looking the for top. the bid son be looking you know, for the bid with this, the thumb thing jay you know where you, you do the little over the top thumb and get him yeah i'm ready son <laughs> i'm ready we'll throw here's the deal we'll throw 32 games of cornhole then we'll arm wrestle and then we'll be in good shape Y'all arm wrestle will be left-handed. Left-handed. What is it he said? And over the top. I'm here to. I'm here to drink beer and break arms and drive trucks or yeah, something like yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. I just saw that movie the other day too. That was awesome. I actually watched it the other day too. That guy's, an, that guy's an underrated villain. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's good. Rodney Kennan wants me to pull out my razor phone. I'm gonna find that thing. I think I got one in a box somewhere. I'm gonna pull it out for the next. <laughs> Only time. razor Jeff's got. He's using on his head. Rodney, easy, calm down. Easy. Hey, I actually did. I got a haircut today. I got a buzz. Buzz to <laughs> the skin. You? Yeah. Are salons open in Arkansas? Yeah, man. They opened last week. Ashley's been. <laughs> <I'm kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> She's been trucking. <laughs> Oh, you gonna retire now, dude? I bet she has clients lined up around the freaking block. Man, really. your story. So we run we run online booking, a little scheduling website for her, so she didn't have to take phone calls and stuff. And I opened that up for her at five o'clock the night they said 
go. We sent out a mass email. She had 200 appointments within an hour. Wow. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy. So, yeah, ladies were ready to, to get out there. Just like the pent-up kayak anglers trying to get out and fish, it, it, folks were trying to get their hair cut. Yeah. We're about there. We're almost to the finish line. Donnie said prepare for a beatdown Saturday. Lambert, is he going to arm wrestle okay. you or fish against you? Which is uh, I don't know, but I heard that same story from a young lady last Saturday, and uh, that didn't happen. So, well, Did you see earlier tonight <laughs> she called you out and said it's going to be a different story this Saturday? She said that earlier. She literally on. called me out Friday and said she didn't need to pre-fish as well, that those fish were always there. Oh, wow. So, I'm not trying to say nothing, but Christine also got beat by the hammer Catherine Fields as well in the KBB first-round bracket. Knocked out, son. Yeah, yeah. Christine made a nice uh, post about that, too, giving props to I Catherine. I know she did. She did. She Too did. Good sport. Those two, I mean, if, if you don't know Catherine, Catherine is super nice, super humble. I mean, she's just – she's an awesome angler. I took her a boat down to Seminole. It, it was a Titan. It was my old Titan. It almost sank on her during the tournament. My <laughs> apologies. <laughs> I wasn't trying to set you up. I fully support you. But seriously, she's super nice, and she's involved with the uh, the women's kayak fishing thing that they do uh heavily involved in that uh, i mean really you know a great steward of the sport i like i like seeing that stuff yeah awesome well gentlemen you guys got anything else we've been going about it doesn't seem like we're on here that long it's been about an hour and 10 minutes we've been running our mouth about uh, it, so. i want i want to do a sponsor plug real quick if you'll let me depends what they're going to send us later jay sorry bro we're out <laughs> <laughs> it's, the, it's the, the cow post bait sack and I don't know about you, but I keep my shower blows in a sack. <laughs> oh, God. It's, it's, wow. This is disgusting. I never what, wanted man? to see your shower blow. The SD what is 105? a shower blow? Can you tell me that? I, I heard Steve-O, I heard Steve-O uh, was slinging a shower blow. What's what's that about? I love, I love a good shower blow. Is it like... <laughs> what? See, this is why we cut it off in an hour, right? <laughs> Right, no, no listen, learn. Ever, uh, look, evergreen shower blow, man. What is it mean? like a whopper plopper? No? Oh, it's that? much better it's much better than a whopper plopper. Tell it's us a, what it's separates a, it's it. It's a pencil bait. Okay. But it's got a it's got a cupped mouth so it spits and it blows I'm everywhere. Out. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's so we're gonna add Jay That's... to the uh no. <laughs> yeah. Katie, do you have a link? Keep, do, you, do you have a link I to those? Just, I, you Katie, you got any shower bait. blowers? What in the world? Oh, we uh, so is it seriously? It's like a big pop bar, like it's a spook pop yeah. bar hybrid, it's or a, what? It's a, yeah, yeah, it's a spook, but it's got a cupped mouth, so it spits. Does it, it walk it, as well, or is it pretty yeah, straight? Yeah. No, it or? Walks. No, okay, it walks. Right. okay, fair enough. The evergreen yeah. folks, like the chatterbait guys, chatterbait people, same people, or no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah same, same, same deal. <laughs> AJ said too much juice. Yeah, too much juice. <laughs> no, uh, so. Rodney, I am drinking Stella's because uh, myself and Cam, we went down to Felsmere last week looking for a live one-on-one -on -one fish off and nobody would show up for it. So uh, so she, we got some Stella's one afternoon because they didn't have anything else at the COVID gas station in Winter Park. So I'm trying to finish these up and, and help out the fridge. James said that was the best sponsor plug ever, Jay. That's way better than some drop and go <laughs> spam post. That's how you got to do it. Yeah, so. man. Like that was actually useful. Like it's a great top water bait, and you know you got the bait sack to keep your treble hook baits. These are on sale at CalcosFishing.com. You get the small and the medium for like fifteen bucks. They're blacked out, so nobody can see your shower blow except people you want to see your shower blow. All right, man. All right, all right. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> wow no, no, that's good stuff man we appreciate you uh anything else ryan do you got any sponsors you need to shout out in a slightly inappropriate I, I just, manner or i you think i go? just i think i just lost all of Get them in the, the last, <laughs> in the last 15 or 20 minutes i'm pretty sure they're all, all gone right. now so uh, all right man I'm going to get yeah. back to work. You're my only sponsor, Jeff. Thank you for all you've contributed to me. All the stickers you ever want. You just say the word. I'll send them to you. <laughs> all two of those. Thank yes. you for that. <laughs> Any more that you want, I'll I, send you two at a I time. I like Lambert, Pat. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, man. Right. So this is not any kind of political statement. That's a, that's a dugout bait and tackle. So they're, <laughs> they're shopping in Marietta, Georgia, right outside Atlanta, the Atlanta metro area. And uh, Jamie Coza is killing it. I mean, he's sold 
I don't know, AJ, how many, 2 million Hobies since January? Like, the guy literally is getting 18 wheeler loads of 360s and sending them out the next day. Uh, That's not the I, area, I heard. Southeast. Uh, it's, yeah. not, I mean, seriously, like, we joke around and we're, you know, going back and forth. They have every, they have your shower blowers. They, I mean, seriously, a full line of JDM products, St. Croix Rods, G. Loomis, I mean, Shimano Reels. And they have, I think in his, his little Hobie area that he built, he probably has 30 kayaks there on display and trailers and all the accessories. I mean, it, it really is. It really is nice. No kidding. No, he's, he's killing it. He's, he's doing very well. Awesome. I like it. Awesome show tonight, guys. That was fun. And, uh, Jay, we appreciate you taking the time to come on here, man. Hey, thank you to the nation for uh, for having me. I appreciate Are it. Are we going to arm wrestle Saturday night, Jay? Yes or no? Do you want it? Will you like it? I just it? caught myself. I was making that f- f- sound, but I'm mm. not going to say that. Yes, I do. Oh, I want it, Jay. I want it. Please, pix- over the top. please, please live stream it in a pixely manner so that we can watch it. <laughs> Donnie Bennett, Donnie Bennett, please live stream it with that wax paper in front of the camera, or however you feel. Yeah, awesome. We'll, we'll let him use somebody sideways. else's phone. Don, Donnie gets sideways with it. So Donnie. Awesome. Well, I'll be looking forward to seeing that and seeing who you hearing about who wins. Uh, but yeah, everybody that watched and commented and then made the the stream inter- interesting, we appreciate y'all. Uh, Mr. Cannon said this was his first show, and he he said we were first class. We appreciate that, Rodney. <laughs> Uh, Thank you, Rodney. Yeah. Appreciate it, man. We'll get another guest lined up and, and be back again next week, huh, Ryan? Yep, sounds good, man. All right, man. Bring bring Rodney on. I want to. Yeah, I wanna yeah. We'll try uh, Rodney Rodney's on. definitely coming on. That's for sure. Yep. I'm sorry, Rodney. You're gonna have to suffer through this with us, bud. <laughs> yeah, man. All right, guys. We're gonna wrap this thing up. Have a great great rest of your week. Good luck this weekend. All right. All see right, you guys. We're going.